hard all the time. He really was into the game. Uh, but there are a number of players like that, and uh, I'm sure he'll do very well at Philadelphia. Thank you, George. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you, Brian Young. Uh, one of nine uh, defensive players chosen in the first 12. The last time that's happened in a draft was 1984 when Irving Fryer started the draft as offense, but nine of 12 were defense. And that's happened again this year with the New Orleans Saints on the clock. And they have about six minutes to go. The trade again, the Saints moved down one slot uh, by allowing the Jets to move up and take Aaron Glenn. And the Saints pick up uh, a fifth round pick from the Jets, the 144th overall selection so the Saints really have the same dilemma that they they had before do they go offensive line now I mean here's a Aaron Taylor is is uh, is sitting there uh, Mel mentioned Joe Johnson uh, there are quite a few ways the Saints can go remember the Saints did address uh, wide receiver position when they signed Michael Haynes luring him away from the Atlanta Falcons so they may feel that they're okay there and they hope with some help I mean every back they had last year was hurt they hope that maybe Vaughn Dunbar uh, number one pick a couple years ago and some others come back and and give them themselves some sort of a running game to go along with their new quarterback Jim Everett just yesterday they signed Jeff Ulanek the center uh, from the Miami Dolphins which essentially means that Joel Hilgenberg is out and Ulanek is in and we mentioned Haynes in of course they lose the safety Atkins and they lose Kennard to Dallas and so new quarterback new receiver hopefully healthy running back new setter the Saints now looking perhaps uh, at defense uh, Joe you know Beaumont, the one thing about this trade that is intriguing to me is and it's something we really haven't touched on the commissioner has assigned compensatory draft picks into the third fourth fifth round on down when you give up a fifth round pick now in this draft you're really not giving up a fifth round pick you're giving up a sixth round pick because there's a lot of players and teams that have been slotted in so this draft is truly not a seven round draft I really think it's an eight round draft that's what becomes unique when you see later round trades happening I think the quality of the player is going to be more backup fill-ins they're all going to make a ball club but it's going to be a special team or so really what the Jets give up is they swap a place that's about it let's backtrack a little the Jets picking Aaron Glenn the second DB gone today Antonio Langham the taller defense back from Alabama going to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, let's check back at NFL Films headquarters with Ron Jaworski. See how Lyon fits into the Browns' defensive scheme. Josh? Well, Chris, I tell you, it was an excellent pick because he's a big play player. I think the Browns, uh, with Turner and Moore at safeties and Bill Belichick's double zone scheme, will allow Langham to make the big plays. Let's take a look at him on film. You'll see right here, he, he reads this ball. It's hanging. He goes for the ball. This is what, what makes a, a big play guy. He's got a sense for the ball, knows the ball. Now here's where he becomes an offensive player. You'll see a lot of defensive backs make the interception, run out of bounds, fall down, whatever the case may be. Here he's looking to score. And boy, I'll tell you, he sets up the blocks. He looks in the open field. And what do you get? Six points. Now in Cleveland's scheme right here, Bill Belichick, you'll see the corner lined up man to man. But you have to understand, in Bill Belichick's double zone system, the safety split. Now he's got backup help. Now he can gamble, play inside, try to force the quarterback to throw the ball into a tough spot. Langham has the ability to do that. See with that backup help right there, he knows he can overplay the receiver. He doesn't have to cover him all over the field. You'll see Langham make this play for an interception. Here you see the Browns defensive back not make the play. Langham gives you that big play ability. I think Bill Belichick's got to be thrilled to be able to get him in that ninth, that ninth spot. Stash here. All right, Josh, thank you. As uh, we return here to New York, the Saints have uh, about two and a half minutes to go to make their pick. So they waited the 15 minutes, made the trade with the Jets. Now we have 15 more minutes. So welcome to the New Orleans Saints half hour show, the Jim Morris show. Um, well, we've yet to see an offensive lineman go. That's yeah. shocking. Isn't it? That really now is. with the 13th pick. Uh, we've had nine of 12 defense, six in a row. And here's the Saints, who could be looking defensive, though. Now, at this point, you think it's a little rich, Mel. Well, I think it really is. I think when you look at the Saints club, they added Haynes to the wide receiver core, Jimmy Everett, a quarterback. I think when you look at the defense of the Saints, last year they started to show signs that they were sliding back a little bit. I think that bothered Jim Mora. He didn't necessarily want to take a defensive lineman with that other pick. He picks up a five in the process. You have the three defensive linemen, Joe Johnson from Louisville, Henry Ford from Arkansas, and then you go down to Timmy Bowens at Mississippi. You also have a cornerback, Dwayne Washington, from NC State. State, who has a very high grade. So there is some quality at this point. By picking up an extra five, he knows he's in pretty good shape. So I think it's a great move by Jim Moore. Well, there's a name that Dwayne Washington, he in most teams' books, is clearly 
was a little bit below Langham and Glenn, but clearly at corner ahead of everyone else who's available. So a team that feels now they're under the squeeze might need a corner. They might be making calls to the Saints or the Eagles right below. Joe. You know, one other point about Dwayne Washington, Boomer, and, and again, I, I go to special teams. He blocked five kicks. I mean, that's a talent. I don't think that's something you teach. I think that's something you can do and you have the ability to do. I think that's what makes you a little bit special. There he is on the phone right now. So if you go by grade, maybe this is the next grade. And maybe by making the trade, even though they only pick up that fifth, and as you say, Joe, uh, really almost like a sixth at 144. If they had Washington right close to Glenn, and he's a little bit bigger, uh, the Saints figure, well, why not get another pick out of it? So just 45 seconds to go. And Tory Cook, of course, uh, free agent with the Saints still unsigned as they have unsigned many of their key players although Ricky Jackson went out tested the waters didn't find the offers I, I don't think that he had anticipated and we've talked about most of the other players so uh, will this be the spot for Dwayne Washington 20 seconds to go in the pick he's 5'11 from NC State so he's a full two or three inches taller than Glenn you know one other thing too Toy Cook got hurt last year and it really hurt him at corner they didn't have a quality guy to go in and fill for him so it's not just a question of looking for somebody to play if you lose Toy it's looking for somebody to go in if you need someone well you hear the countdown here uh, in the crowd here's the pick well, the card is on the way up, at least, so the Saints get 15 minutes in about 20 seconds. <laughs> well, they're in the central time zone, so they allow for that. <laughs> and the commissioner gets the selection. The uh, Saints have selected Joe Johnson, defensive Ooh. end, Louisville. of the names you mentioned now Washington was on the phone so you got to think that he's going to go pretty soon either to Philly who's next the Rams who are after that or somebody who's going to trade up to go for him but Joe Johnson now what seven defenders in a row in a row the last time an offensive lineman didn't go this far was 87 when John 100 pounds of clay was chosen with the 15th pick uh, in 1987 so yet no offensive lineman and, and your thought on Joe Johnson I like him I think he's a junior with a great upside in the update that comes out right before the draft, I rated him the defensive lineman with the best long-range potential. It was 255, 260 as a sophomore, got up to about 285 as a junior this year for Howard Schnellenberger and did a great job pressuring quarterbacks and getting into the backfield. 23 times he broke loose and fired into the backfield to disrupt the play. Here he nails Charlie Garner from Tennessee. You see a guy that got bigger and got faster. His 40 times before the draft were in the 498 range, which is remarkable for a kid. 285 pounds. You also have to take into consideration his age. He's only 21 years old. He's got a lot of football ahead. The Saints picked up that fifth round pick by moving down to one spot. Still got Joe Johnson. So I think the hats off to Jim Mora for using the draft process correctly. All right, Mel, let's think. Defensive player, Louisville. You know where we're going. Let's go to New England and check in with Tom Jackson from <laughs> Louisville. Louisville. <laughs> Joe Johnson, a uh, quick riser here these last couple of weeks, Tommy, on everyone's boards. Well, I think not only a, a, a quick riser during the week, Chris, but certainly a quick riser today since this draft has started. You talked about the number of defensive players that have gone, and I think that a guy like a Joe Johnson, who most people projected, I think even Mel, uh, maybe as a late first rounder, now has moved up into that uh, middle first round up upper, upper middle first round area and I think we're gonna see that continue uh, Joe Johnson would have gone in this area anyway except he's very young uh, a little bit raw as far as his technique but uh, it's certainly gonna be a guy who's gonna develop into a, a, a fine football player in this league all right Thomas so Joe Johnson defensive lineman from Louisville a couple of years ago a defensive lineman from Louisville went in the first round Ted Washington went to the Niners they traded him just recently to the Denver Broncos so uh, the Saints hoping for a little bit of return than the Niners had we'll be back with the Eagles on the clock in a moment
GMC truck, the Arizona truck. Stand back, Ford. Watch out, Chevy. Here comes the 94 GMC Sierra Extended Cab. It's built Arizona strong and Arizona tough. It's loaded with all these features, but priced at only $299 a month for 36 short months with only $2,000 down. There's only one truck leading the way in Arizona. GMC Sierra. Culliver. Tony Corey. Biddle. Bud Beck. Showcase. Oh, the curves. Own the streets. Own any new Kawasaki with 90-day no-pay financing. 90-day no-pay. Go play for a limited time for qualified buyers. Only at participating Kawasaki dealers. Valley Kawasaki, 16251 North Cave Creek Road in Phoenix. some late breaking sports news call all day every day right away the ESPN update line Welcome back uh, to the NFL Draft as our coverage continues from the Marriott Marquis Hotel here in New York on ESPN and points beyond one of those points beyond Philadelphia the Eagles with their first of their uh, two first round picks a team that also has uh, a couple of third round picks uh, and also picked up Bill Romanowski so the Eagles big players and let's go to a guy that was drafted in the first round some years back our Mark Malone what's up with the Eagles Mark any clues yet. Well, I think what's going to happen right now, Chris, is that they, they wanted to pick a player in the first round that could be an impact player. Joe Johnson is a guy that uh, the, the New Orleans Saints took. I think that was the last guy you could expect them to take in terms of defensive spot on the line in the first round this high. Right now, I believe they're going to go for an offensive player. Richie told me, look for a defensive tackle or maybe the offensive line. I talked to he and John Wooten yesterday. They're very enamored with Bernard Williams out of Georgia, the 6'8 and a half tackle at 315, really thinks he might fit in. Also, they said they wouldn't leave this draft without an impact running back. That's a guy who can make an impact right away. The guys they like, Mario Bates out of Arizona State and Charlie Garner out of Tennessee. Those are players they think can put an impact on this football team, a lot like Emmett Smith, make players miss, and they don't feel they have that right now on a consistent basis. Well, Holmes and then Anton Davis a couple of years before they've drafted some young offensive linemen have had some good success there. One thing that may have shaded and may still in these, uh, well, five minutes left on the clock or nine minutes, I can't read, Mark, is the Chris Dolman situation. Atlanta and Philadelphia had been in the hunt to try and get Dolman from the Vikings. The Vikings wanted a one. Of course, Atlanta doesn't have it. Philly has two. Is there anything going on with the Eagles making a last pitch for Dolman, or is that one about gone? I know Atlanta really couldn't pull the trigger there. Well, Chris, they told me yesterday that they were out of the loop officially. They would not spend a first-round draft choice, even the 29th on Dolman. They had talked to Chris. He wanted to come here and play. They would love to have him. In fact, Dolman told him, according to, to, to the people here in Philadelphia, he didn't blame him for not using a number one. Richie said a number one draft, uh, draft pick should play for at least eight or ten years and they're looking for the Eagles to build down the road they just didn't want to stop gap measure and they felt people willing to spend first round draft picks and lots of money on people even players of Dolman's caliber were panicking they need to look at the long term picture you know all right Mark we'll check back with you shortly as the Eagles have about eight and a half minutes to go on the clock of course an impending ownership change but a, a change of residence from Texas A&M to the New York Jets and the Big Apple Aaron Glenn cornerback is with our Craig James, Craig. Chris, we now have the guy that can address the issue of not having a big body. What do you what do you feel like when these guys talk about the lack of size? Well, I don't feel that my size is really you know, is something that that's gonna really affect my playing ability. I mean, I've played against big receivers all my life. And I mean, you know, I played against Lavelle Pinkney and um, Lloyd Hill of Texas Tech. So I think I'm going to go out there and do a good job for the Jets. You're going to a secondary that has a reputation of being fierce in hitting. Ronnie Lott, looking forward to that. Oh yeah, I mean, it's, you just that's a lifetime dream to go out there and play with a guy like Randy Lott, so it's going to be very interesting. Rules changed this year. Kickoffs will go from the 30-yard line instead of the 35. You're a punt returner, we all know about that. Would you like to return kicks? Oh, I love to do that. I mean, you have you know, a lot more yards to really just do what you can. And I mean, you know, I'm going to go out there, just let the Jets uh, know that they picked a good guy. Have a 